All right, here we are for tips and tricks for Mayhem Athlete here. 21.3 and 21.4. 21.3 is 15 front squats at 95, 65, 30 toes to bar, 15 thrusters at the same weight, rest a minute, 15 front squats at 95, 65, 30 chest to bar, 15 thrusters, same weight, rest a minute, same thing, 15 thrusters, or 15 front squat, 30 bar muscle up, and 15 thrusters. Then, when your time is up there, you have seven minutes to do a complex, this is 21.4, of one deadlift plus one clean plus a hang clean plus a jerk. So make sure you write this down because it's super confusing. Um, on this video, you're gonna have a warm up from K-Star like you did last week, uh, really good. Get you ready, get you primed for squatting a bunch, uh, hinging at the hip, and then also uh, lifting heavy right after that. Myself and Jake are gonna talk through the RX workout, and then Tasia's gonna talk through the no equipment and the foundations version. Come along. Hey, what's up, Mayhem family? So, man, we've got a doozy. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh, I've got a couple positions I want to prep on, and here I'll tell you my thinking, and a couple ideas to make those cleans a little easier overhead. So first of all, man, a lot of grip going on in this thing, right? I don't think it's going to be a limiting factor, but I think if you come off the bar, it's going to cost you some time. So one of the things that's a mistake is if you haven't put enough time and in gripping and getting yourself arms really warmed up because you're kind of saving it or you're worried about your legs, that can end up being a shocker. So what I would recommend is actually doing some rowing if you have access to it, jump roping if you don't. Now long warm up is going to be key because I'm really interested in actually getting your legs pumped up with blood. That's actually one of the big deals here. There's going to be a lot of sort of demand on short lever quads with knees bent and in long lever. So we've got a couple pieces that we're going to prime for that. So as we go over here, for my pre-workout pieces, I'm thinking the hip capsule mob first, and that's just to make sure that we actually can squat and have access to that position, which is this resetting, and I'll walk you through that in a second. Second is double overhead band, just making sure that we're super primed and prepped, and just some active contract, relax, and range. Instead of just pressing there, we're gonna do some sort of play and just make sure that we have full access and it's effortless. And then again, hitting some anterior band distractions. So some long lever lunges to make sure that that hip is open. If you're trying to jump at the end and you can't open your hip because you've just closed it a whole bunch and you're feeling cooked, it's gonna limit you in being able to open the hip. So a couple ideas will coming in the transition just about getting your hips open and breathing. So notice that I'm interested in getting my legs and quads pumped up with blood and I'd recommend even some short heavy bike sets. I want your legs to be like swollen ticks. Take enough time to really recover eight to ten minutes after you've had that but I want, really want your legs to be juiced and, and not shocked. If you run into this workout with your legs shocked, chances are at the end it's not going to feel like they want to generate a lot of force. So that's going to be tricky anyway. So again, row for grip. Okay, so let me show you what the mobs are. So the hip capsule mode, if you've never seen it before, is just basically on the knee, single leg, and then I want you to just play around with getting that hip set, and then play with some different rotation pieces. So the idea here is to keep your weight going through the femur, and to make it easier for you to close your hip, bring your knee to your chest, or chest to your knee. And so what I'll do is just two minutes of just wobbling around, some isometrics here, playing each leg, even just a minute or so, and what you'll see is that by reclaiming a good femur-pelvis relationship makes it a lot easier for you to bring that knee to your chest, which means it's a little bit less effort and you have more choice. Again, double band overhead means I'm just going to throw something here. I'm going to tell my brain, hey, get used to it. Thumbs up, and then look, just being able to wind back and forth, pull, and almost pull one arm down, push into here a little bit. And what you'll see is that it's just gonna make it easier for you to, to prime these positions. So this doesn't cost anything, the opposite of pressing overhead. But again, I can press down, get my lats on, hit some corners, so I'm a little bit more efficient in those backswing. And then finally, third big mob, we're not doing more than three ever, 
and these are the most important ones, I think, is getting that hip open like we've done before and making sure that I have access to that hip extension in this position. So short lever, but really I'm interested in this long lever play where I've got access to my backswing and then when I can time to open up the hip and the clean, it's easier to find that position. So put the band on, start playing around, be active in these positions and just make sure that you've got that last little bit of hip open because once we finish that first piece, it's gonna be dicey. It's gonna feel like you don't wanna open up your hip. So the more we can do that, the more effective. Now, what I would say is, in between, obviously we're trying to catch up. So take your time to get caught up. Exaggerate your breathing, slow it down. And in between those lifts, time your breathing or make sure that you're getting a big pressurization. Then make your lift, repressurize. You might be able to pull out some historic lifts for you if you've got a big bag of air. If you're panting or don't take that moment to repressurize, chances are it's gonna be harder to make that lift. So take, be discreet, make sure you can take a full breath. Second, foot pressure, foot pressure, foot pressure. So if you can have someone shout, foot pressure, if you get pulled out as you're tired onto your toes or you're, you're not even, it's gonna be really hard to jump with those heavy weights. So as you're dipping, make sure you can feel that whole foot. Don't come onto the toes. Remember what Mike Bergner says and what Sage says, 90% of missed lifts are foot position. So let's hammer those two things in that transition. Now, finish, recover. You gotta get on a long bike or a long walk because even though we feel like this is the end of the open, most of us are gonna to try to go through training. So we wanna go back into training. We wanna make sure that this doesn't have sort of an unnecessarily large session cost. So get on the bike tonight after the session, get on the long walk, but I also want you to get on your stomach tonight in front of the TV and give me 10 minutes, five plus minutes per quadriceps. I think that's where you're gonna feel the most. And laying on your stomach. Now pro tip, if you lay on a pillow, then you're a little bit higher off the ground and it makes it easier to roll your quads. If you wanna just hang out, be sipping a recovery drink and have someone smash you or do a little bit of mashing, just loosen, reducing that session cost so that this workout doesn't stalk us for a few days afterwards, right? We wanna be able to reduce that session cost so we can get back to it. Again, a few keys openers. I think these are vital positions. Some ideas about just getting engorged. Make sure you're taking time to feel your foot pressure, getting those big breaths. Tonight, long walk before you go to bed. Really, like try to make this a 15 minute walk if you can, and then get on some quads, rip it up. All right, we have our beautiful model here, Ben, in all his glory. All right, so on the front squats here, smooth. Um, we talked about it. Kind of keep that grip open. Uh, grip's gonna start adding up if you're really death gripping that barbell. Um, it's going to take a toll on you more than you think. Show them one, Ben. Show them one, Ben. Show it to us. Keep loose. You did see one of the panchicks uh, also do the little yeah. like Show uh, them the cross, cross there. If you're if you real to, fatigued you... and you got that range of motion there, you can do that or limitation. This is a good option. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, two, three finger grip. Can you show that one more time, Ben? Yeah, back and forth. Now boom, go back boom. to the arms cross. <laughs> one more Let's time. And then obviously at the top, these are going to be fast reps, fast hopefully reps. unbroken if you want to do this workout re really fast. Um, but if you got to breathe at the top quickly, otherwise we're burning through these front squats really, really quick. All right, so make sure you have your eight foot gap. Then he's going to go up here on his toes to bar. Something we've talked about. Um, you could do the straight leg toe to bar real fast, quick kip. Um, if you wanted to, you just do the little knees to elbow with the kick at the end. Uh, kind of depends on what you're going for there. I think just smooth reps. Um, speed is obviously king here, but you don't want to wear that grip out. We talked about it, maybe one quick or even two quick rests. Um, these first two rounds, I think, with the toes to bar and the chest to bar are not where the workout is won um, because you get a pretty decent, you know, one minute rest to shake that stuff out. But, you know, take that time, I think, shake the forearms out, jump right back up. We talked about 18, 12. I think Ted did 20 and 10. Um, back to the barbell, on the barbell, Taking legs, drive with those shoulders, or drive with the legs, take the shoulders out of it as much as you can because we have bar muscle ups coming up. Um, keeping that grip nice and loose. Probably open hand grip the whole time. We like that, especially Suicide if you feel grip. safe with it. Yep. Show us, Ben. Like any thruster, obviously you want to keep your weight in the midfoot there. Don't get toesy. If you want to go heel, 
but really driving with the hips. Obviously, this can be a very shoulder intensive workout, so hopefully that bar is weightless by the time you totally stand up, just to save those shoulders as much as possible. If you're going fast in this workout again, sub 10, you definitely gotta keep the thrusters unbroken the whole time uh, for sure. Something Anison talked about a little bit, she did the workout. Uh, she said her back got a little bit tight, so maybe think about wearing a lightweight belt. Um, keep it relatively loose. I wouldn't crank that thing down. It's not super heavy barbell, but it might help you out a little bit. Um, it might get in your way a little bit on toes to bar, so think about that. Maybe practice with that. Um, you get a minute rest, back to the front squats, same thing, um, whatever feels comfortable. On the chest to bar, um, being as smooth as you can, as efficient as you can. Um, widening the hands out is something that I've started doing recently just to um, improve the rate of the rate of speed on reps quicker reps um, yeah. yeah also with shorter range of motion each time so yeah. not doing quite as much work wide wide well, i mean do whatever is comfortable for you i was just giving a little that was my tip for the and my you trick. see ben does a good job show a couple more ben he's just falling through there at the end so chest bar if you're smooth at these it's just falling Almost through these reps gliding and touching that bar on the way down you don't want to disrupt the movement by hitting your chest on the bar uh, it's going to throw you off and uh, make you really inefficient. So get really long on them too. Get yourself get far back so you can come through that on the toes bar as well. Try not to break that kip with a bent knee. Try to stay back there as long as you can. Pointed toes. All these gymnasty people, uh, you for sure can do that. And think about that in your warm up to prime that in there. Um, like we talked about too, 18, 12, something like that. If 30 is even possible for you, I don't really think you'd do 30. Um, in my opinion. Now the four to five seconds you're shaking it out is not gonna matter because you're gonna make that up with the bar muscles uh, with the less fatigue. Yep. Back to the barbell, thruster, same thing. You don't have to show a thruster, we've already done that. Um, it's probably rest. gonna start hurting there, but you can't drop the barbell if you're yep. gonna go fast. Yep, gotta go through it. Um, smooth reps, rest a minute, and then it's the bar muscle up one. The bar muscle up one, I think, like we said, uh, we were talking about for top athletes, this is the separator, but also for um, any athlete, this yeah. is a separator. Uh, bar muscle ups, what's gonna, gonna determine your score here. Um, think efficiency. Think, uh, you know, if, if the pull is what um, is going to fatigue on you first, then your dip, or your, you're gonna get just over the barbell, or over the barbell. Show one of those, bar. Ben, where you have a big dip. Big you're dip. gonna come over with the whole body. This is if it's harder for you to get a bar muscle up at all. Yep. You have a big lean over at the top, that's good. And then, not getting as high. If your pull is good, but your press out is going to be uh, the limiting factor. Get that big kip, and you still have to pass through a dip, but you can pass through a little bit higher of a dip uh, when you do it. Nice. Ooh. Okay, or go do a killer. flip over the bar. There you go. Better. All right, so limit the amount of rest on this because this is what's going to bring it home, uh, but be ready to uh, pick that bar up to do 15 thrusters. 15 thrusters are gonna be pretty difficult after doing all those bar muscle ups, but you gotta kinda of grind through it. Yeah, this is where you send it, and then whatever's left in the tank on the thrusters is what's gonna be there. Feel good, Ben? Are you good with 21.3? Right. You got right, anything else? You're gonna good. kill it. 21.4. Right. So from there, as soon as he finishes and drops the barbell on the thruster, his time for 21.4 starts. Something we talked about uh, off camera is just do some squat cleans, maybe some jerks to warm up at your lighter weights. You don't have to actually start the complex in your warm ups. Uh, we saw Scott do it on uh, the announcement video. Uh, just get warmed up when you feel like you're starting to get close to that weight, then you wanna try to do an attempt. Uh, even if you, you, know, you get through the, the squat clean or the hang, you do the clean first. If you're like, all right, I did the deadlift, I did the clean, maybe skip that hang clean and go to the jerk. Don't waste reps here. Um, seven minutes is a pretty long time, but you're pretty fatigued. Um, and then that back half seems to go a lot faster than that front half. So be thinking about that and be ready for that. So you're going to start there, like, loading the bar immediately. You'll change guys. You maybe go 135 to 185, totally depending on your weight. So Ben, he can either go straight into a clean and jerk warm up, or even do like a deadlift hang clean into a jerk. If you have the, um, change plates, the pound increments, you are allowed to do one pound increment. So a half pound, half pound. Um, yeah, so have those, have those handy. Um, use them if you got them. Depending on the type of athlete you are as well, like me, I'm way more strong in the power because my squat kind of sucks. So I'm gonna power as long as I can. I'll be star fishing, don't necessarily recommend that. But uh, relative to your power clean, it's probably about the same as your hang squat clean. So you might be able to get away with at least power cleaning for a lot of the workout. 
Um, and then from what their weights were, these guys are clean jerking like 365 plus in the video of the pan checks, but they only got what, like around 300? I think 311 and then... 311 Scott and, and then, then maybe, the maybe 275 to 295. So if your max is 300, a great goal is probably in that 250 to 270 range. Ladies, if your max is around 200, you might want to get from the 160 to 180 range. Uh, first attempts are probably after two to three practice and then real, real attempts probably like three about so, maybe one attempt every minute to minute 10. This is a nice little mayhem repeat workout with a little heavy lifting session after, so. This is, yeah, exactly what we do all the time. Every day, so be ready, have fun, and uh, crush it. Get after it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Equipment Free 21.3. This workout is for time. We got 30 air squats, 30 V-ups, 30 thrusters with a stick that you find from outside or a PVC pipe if you have access. Rest one minute, then we're going 30 air squats, 30 dips, which will be between two chairs or a surface that you can get our dip range of motion. 30 thrusters with that stick or PVC, rest one minute. Then we got 30 air squats, 30 handstand push-ups, 30 thrusters with a stick or PVC. When you finish, you're gonna rest two minutes and then you'll start 21.4 equipment free, which is as many rounds and reps as possible in five minutes of 20 alternating pistols and 20 alternating shoulder taps in a free standing handstand. What's up guys, welcome to 21.3 equipment free. So this workout is 30 air squats, 30 V-ups, 30, I guess I'm not supposed to talk to you again. No, 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 no. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to 21.3 Tips and Tricks. So in this workout, we've got air squats and thrusters and both of these movements are coupled in all three sets. We wanna make sure we're going pretty fast on these because this is the easier part of the workout. So Jake on his air squats, get a nice good feet position so he can move fast, get those hips open at the top, relax the arms as much as possible. The main thing is focusing on these V-ups, right? Smart sets on V-ups, smart sets on those dips, and smart sets on the handstand push-ups. On the V-ups, we wanna eliminate any no reps, so making sure those hands are touching the ground and the feet, and getting those hands up above the ankles. Awesome. The dips, these are definitely really difficult. So- Very hard. Break them up smart from the beginning, small sets to start, and then just chip away. It's easy to rest. If you need to, just set those feet down, take a quick shake out, and go back to another small set. Same idea going forward with those handstand push-ups. So our arms are definitely gonna be a little bit fatigued by this point. So we're gonna make sure we get our hands in the width of the box like normal. Utilize that kip position as he comes down to the head. He's gonna really use the hips and legs to fire up into that handstand push-up position. Smart sets here from the beginning. And when you get to that last set of thrusters, that's when you send it. From there, you're gonna rest two minutes before we go into AMRAP five minutes, 20 alternating pistols and 20 alternating freestanding shoulder taps. Tasia is going to demo this for sure uh, for the pistols. Like everything else, you want to get super warm, ankle range motion, hip mobility, check out our warm-up tips there. Uh, you can definitely hold your leg there if needed. It's going to help for those that lack mobility, like me and Taser with her ankles. So if you rock forward on your toes, that's okay. Just try to stay moving. You can shift your weight. The biggest thing, just don't get no reps by that extra leg coming back and hitting the ground there. On pistols, you want to stay moving as smooth as you can because it's just a body weight movement and you're probably going to be more limited by the skill with the freestanding shoulder taps. So, whoo, Tasia, let's see what she got. So, she's freestanding, boom, there. This is probably a lot of people, you might get two or three attempts at a time, just try to get some good reps before you have to come back down. This isn't something a lot of people are practicing all the time. People do a lot of handstand walking on their hands on the wall, but not necessarily a ton of shoulder taps. With that, really, really fast taps is what you want. Be safe there, just have a game plan for if you need to bail coming back to the feet, uh, same moving as quick as possible, obviously, to get those reps. What's up, guys? Welcome to 21.3 Foundations. This workout is for time. We've got 15 air squats, 30 sit-ups, and then 15 thrusters with a stick or PVC. Rest one minute, 15 air squats, 30 dumbbell rows, 15 on our right arm, 15 on our left arm, then 15 thrusters with a stick or PVC. Rest one minute, 15 air squats, 30 push-ups, followed by 15 thrusters with that stick or PVC. 
From there, you're gonna go directly into this complex or at the time cap of 15 minutes of one deadlift, one clean, one hang clean, and one push press, and you'll have seven minutes to build in a load as heavy as you can. Hey guys, what's up, bro? Welcome to 21.3 Foundations. We're gonna talk through some tips and tricks and just the different style of movements that you can do in this workout. So we've got air squats in this workout. We've got two different options, a traditional air squat. We're thinking feet about shoulder width apart, breaking parallel if we can on these traditional air squats, stand up, hips open. Really trying to utilize those hips if we can. If we can't break parallel, that's all right. We can sit to a chair. So sit right to a chair, relax and back up. This is another option for the air squat. In the middle of that workout, we have sit-ups. So there's an option for a traditional sit-up where we'll touch behind our head and then sit up and reach and touch our feet in front. So we can do this as option one if we want. Option two is reaching up and just touching our knees. So we can sit up, reach up, touch the knees and back. And then option three is sitting on the edge of this chair. We'll hold on to the sides of the chair, get our feet up off the ground, straighten them out and tuck them back in. So straight, yep, and tuck back in. That's another option for the sit up. We have, following there, we got thrusters. So if you guys have a PVC or a stick, you can perform the thruster with this PVC or a stick. Traditional, just like an air squat, same position, pressing that up and overhead. If breaking parallel is something difficult for us, we can climb over to this trailer, chair, excuse me, and sit to the chair and then press up overhead. Perfect. The next option we have, or the next movement in 21.3 foundations is the dumbbell row. So for these dumbbell rows, yep, we're gonna lean over just like Jake is. He's got a nice tight back here and pulling the elbows back behind, keeping the dumbbells, the top of the dumbbell right near his chest. You can go both hands at a time, or if you need to go one hand at a time, you can get on an elevated surface and do the same thing with one dumbbell. The last movement we have is the push-up. So this can be a traditional push-up. We got our hands under our shoulders, chest to the floor, and press back up. If you guys need to, you can scale to the knees. So we can go knees on the ground and chest all the way to the floor, press back up. And then the final option would be to an elevated surface like the back of this chair or a box or something like that and lean into the push-up there. So we've got a lot of different options for this workout, 21.3. Make sure you pick something that you feel comfortable with to keep moving and to have fun. From there, once you finish the third set, you'll go right into building to a complex of a deadlift, hang clean, or deadlift, hang clean, squat clean, excuse me, a deadlift, then a full clean, then a hang clean, and then a push press. So you're gonna deadlift the bar, using that good form, go in all the way back down to the ground to a power clean or squat clean, whatever you prefer, bar back to the legs, then a hang clean, power or squat, and finishing with a push press. Make sure we use those legs on that push press to drive the bar up. You'll have seven minutes to climb to a load there. Any tips or tricks you got for that at the end? Just be smart with what weight you use. Uh, be, know what your max is if you have no idea what your max is. You can start with a really light barbell, maybe an empty barbell or 65, 95 pounds. Build slowly. If you're not super confident in movement, five, 10 pounds at a time. If you do know your max, let's say it's 200 pounds, you're probably not gonna get over 90% of that. Maybe you will if you PR. So if your max is 200, maybe get in the 180 range or so. Just realize you're short on time, so you're probably gonna get five or six really good attempts, maybe seven, including the warm up. Uh, have fun with this, especially if you're doing foundations or equipment free get after it, uh, it's a unique workout. So you guys will have a blast.